Hello, everybody. Big news today. President Trump is going to visit uh, Midland, Odessa. And uh, so I want to do a little video. And, and of course, uh, you know, I'm suspecting that, that the true reason behind it is, is uh, you know, just the overwhelming amount of crimes that have gone on here. The evidence uh, in which the press is trying to hide, do their best to hide from the public to, to allow these criminals to break into more homes and murder more innocent people using secret police murder games and doctors to to maim mutilate and dismember innocent crime victims and and so anyways uh here's a here's a uh, news story on my facebook this is my facebook right here and uh and and i just uh, took a clip out of it ector county republican chairman tisha crow said bubba salisbury was the prime mover in securing the event largely because he's a close friend of donald trump jr in and is the number three republican bundler or key fundraiser in the nation. Adding that she didn't know how much the younger Salisbury had raised, Crow said, Bubba has been on the phone either with the White House or someone in the Trump family multiple times each week. He and Junior have gotten close. Vice President Pence was here in April 2019 for a private fundraiser in a draped hangar by the Commemorative Air Force, and he was amazed to see all the rigs and pump jacks. You know, I've even wondered, because I was told there's some, you know, very important people that were, you know, involved in the underground parties, if, if Donald Trump Jr., you know, was was maybe he was one of the people here. I didn't know, you know. And but what we're what I'm seeing here is that he's close friends with old men here in Midland, and uh, and he was here before the last election. Uh, you know, got millions of dollars in donations, and and you know, and here one guy wrote. Uh, I wonder if he's going to an oil party. He's talking about the underground oil parties, the famous oil parties, etc. You know, where, 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 you know, I was told the young girl was murdered at in 2010. You know, it's believed to be connected to the murder last time her died before the 2008 oil show. And then, then I'm ambushed and shot in 2012. And, and, you know, and these parties are real famous, put on by wealthy oil men, ones that would donate to campaigns. Okay. And so, uh, this Mike, he says, I wonder if he's going to an oil party, right? And I reply, I said, I have a feeling that some wealthy oil men here want to donate to his campaign, and in return for their money, Trump will continue to turn a blind eye to the overwhelming amount of evidence and injustice going on to the many victims of this murderous crime ring. Okay. And, uh, and and Mike says, you're probably right. Money talks and they have billions. We already know Pence was there. And I'm going to go over that because I'm going to talk about Midland and presidents, okay? And and so, and, and I... Uh, I've got some, oh, this come out of a news story I just copied and pasted, and this was in today. President Donald Trump will shift his focus to American energy dominance during the stop in Texas later this week, and that will include his first visit to an oil rig, okay? And, uh, and, and you know, and, and I got a feeling it's going to also talk about oil show parties and murder of little girls and cover up and, and dismembering crime victims and multiple murders and, and secret police gangs and, and just all the other uh, crime the homes broken into all over Midland, Odessa, Texas, you know, where they've rigging on people in the attic, you know, and the press is, has, has tried to cover that or has covered it up from the public to allow the crimes to continue. During the stop Wednesday at Double Eagle Energy at the West Texas City of Midland, Trump will discuss how the U.S. is achieving energy dominance by cutting regulation, etc. Trump was also to an oil rig in Midland, the city where President George Bush was raised and where he met his wife, Laura. While in Texas, Trump will raise money for the Republican Party, a fundraiser in Odessa. It'll be Trump's 16th visit as president to Texas, uh, he won Texas by nine percentage points over Clinton and uh, uh, hoping for competitive rates. Double Eagle, Eagle Energy says it's one of the largest operators in the Permian Basin covering parts of western Texas and southeastern Mexico. I don't know if they were a company back in 2012 and... and uh, you know, and hopefully someday, you know, that, you know, these people behind having these parties, uh, you know, underground parties and murdering these little girls are, are finally held accountable. The ones that are rigging homes and breaking into it and, and the people that are, are, are stopping free press in America to murder one homeowner after another while President Trump is president. You know, let's, 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 you know, the, we know where the buck stops, you know. I mean, I, I was shot when, when Obama and Biden was in office. And the crimes have never stopped 
uh, after Trump was elected. And that's why I voted for him, to drain the swamp. You know, I prayed that one day I could wake up and not live under the threat of death. That one day these criminals would finally, finally be held accountable for their crimes. And it don't matter how much evidence it is, uh, it's just cover-up, corruption, murder, rape, you know, uh, theft, burglary, terrorism, and torture. You know, that's what's going on. Midland, Texas, home of President George Bush and Laura Bush. You know, interestingly, a, a friend told me that the sister of a Secret Service agent for, for Bush lived across the street from my house, you know. And then we also know that the brother-in-law of the U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway used to live across the street from my house, the late brother-in-law. And, you know, of course, Conaway announced he was retiring there, you know, actually right there, right after they poured concrete behind my house, where I believe the tunnels were at. And that, that's another story. We're going to go over that. Shannon Jeter obviously knows, you know, a lot of information here. You know, this was a message, uh, print screen from him, and uh, and I posted it before. You know, I, you know, I wish law enforcement talked to him, but I got a feeling the corruption, they already know the truth, you know. And, and you know, and that's the sad part is trying to find police that are not corrupt, to stop these murders, these home invasions, these burglaries, these terrors, these doctors faking x-rays and all the other crimes that are gone, gone on with this, okay? And so, but here's the important part is he tells me uh, that you can't perceive how big these people are. And that's what I'm going to show you that. They're bigger people than you can ever perceive. And that's why I wondered, who are these people? Could it be Donald Trump Jr., you know? I mean, who are these people that are so big that, that can, you know, hire a dozen secret police to tamper with evidence line police reports and cover up a premeditated home invasion, capital attempted murder, and I'm just the next guy after the last guy. I'm not even supposed to be alive. I crawled out of my hands and knees to survive this premeditated murder attempt. Okay. And the other thing Shannon was telling me here, cops can kill you and get away with it. You know, stop publicizing their business. Then you go buy another home, you know, and good luck trying to find a DA that's going to file any charges on a cop, even if they are breaking in homes and murdering people. That's what he's saying. Right. And, and, you know, and that's the thing. What he's telling me is cops were involved, you know, and what was their business? Was their business pimping out little girls and murder them when they don't? Is that what he's saying? Is their business rigged? in private homes so to, so they can, st uh, for human trafficking, sex trafficking, stealing from homeowners, terrorism, etc. You know? and, then, and then the last point here, he says, keep your doors locked and tie wire sl shut. It will slow them down. And that seems to be a big point as the tie wire, you know, I had trapped one of the burglars. I'd been reporting burglaries to the police for over a year. I trapped a burglar in my home and then I get shot and it looks like the police shot me to free the burglar. Okay, is that messed up? Up, you know, that's when now we can see why the police didn't arrest the burglar that I was reporting to them because they were working with the burglars to commit the felonies. Okay. Here, this was interesting. Layla O'Brien, uh, she she said, I worked on this project. She's a CAD programmer. Talking about the Ungrand project. It cost $7.35 million. Okay. Another woman said it, there was four three-bedroom underground homes, 25-foot uh, deep, each costing over a million dollars a piece. They are having pedophile parties down there. Uh <coughs> She said it used to be called Safe Houses. That's the name of the project. And and L Layla told me this was finished in 1987. That fit other evidence that I found. And at that time, jo uh, George Bush Sr. was vice president. Iran-Contra was going on during that time. And she felt like the Bushes were involved in, in these tunnels and the underground homes. And then there's other people that have confirmed that. that you know, that I've, I've got other screenshots. Another woman said... Yeah, when they were building it, they were they were saying that it had to do with uh, uh, salt domes for oil, but the people working there were saying, no, it's underground homes. That was what a different person told me. My friend tells me about a young girl murdered at an oil show party that happened in 2010, and in 2013, the remains of a 14 to 21 year old girl are found outside of Midland and nobody seems to care. You know, the press, this is the only story ever in the press, I think, that I know of in seven years. And I think they all know it was because it was this oil show party murder put on by wealthy oil men that have probably donated to presidential campaigns. And they do that to, to, to you know, to pay off and to cover up for secret police, doctors to, to you know, dismember crime victims, etc. Okay. Okay. 
uh, there's a reason I had this. This was the, uh, in 2013. Oh, I remember. Okay. This was the protective order here, and that has been thrown in my face so many times. Remember the ex-wife that I hadn't seen her talk to in a year and a half, uh, that lived a hundred miles away, files a protective order on me, uh, you know, a year and a half after, and she's alleged to be involved in the shooting. You know, it's absurdity. Okay. And then I get a lifetime protective order. She tells these lies. That's where it's found out that she was friends with the dirty cop, uh, uh, Midland detective Rosa Rodriguez. They both perjured themselves in court. Rodriguez had been caught tampering with the evidence. She's been caught lying on police reports. But but this was from a recorded conversation in 2011. And here I'm talking to her, and I'm reminding this ex-wife where she stuck her finger in my house and said, "You're either going, you know, uh, <coughs> you." What she said, "You're going to pay for me apartment, or I'm telling everybody you're crazy." Okay, that's going to cost me uh, eighteen hundred, twelve hundred dollars a month. And what this is is from there's a video on this. I mean, this is a tra- this is a transcript from a video on YouTube called "Follow the Money," and she says, "I made a mistake," you know. And I'm like, "How can you stay here and, and you know tell me stories of people crawling across the attic, and then you come back here and try to extort eighteen hundred dollars a month from me?" And then with the threat, you're going to call me crazy. I made a mistake. She admits to being a witness. She admits to the extortion. And then as soon as we go to court 18 months later, here she calls me delusional along with her dirty cop friend, Rosa Rodriguez. They both go into court and testify carrying out the extortion threat. The question's been asked if Rosa Rodriguez was planning on getting some of the extortion money from me. And she was mad. And, and so here's a, or, or maybe she's involved in the murder attempt. You know, and still in the property in the house or paid off by, you know, wealthy old men. Who knows? You know, all we know is it, it, there it is right there, you know. But the whole point of that is during this, the district attorney, the ADA assistant, printed off a bunch of stuff from my Facebook and, and, and handed it to us. We had a copy. We're coming out of court. My lawyer's looking through it. And she looks over at me with surprise and she said, you contacted the president? And I just smiled and I looked back and I said, I went all the way to the top. And at the time, that was Obama. Okay, I contacted Obama. You know, I mean, I I started at the police and the Texas Rangers, the FBI, the Attorney General, the District Attorney, the you know Congressman Conway, Cornyn, Cruz. You just name it. I talk everybody that I could talk to. I've talked to and tried to contact the DEA, the FBI. You know, the DOJ, the IG. You know, I mean, I have all the evidence. You know, it's not a proof problem. It's a presidential level of cover up going on. On here and that was the reason I told that story. This was a Facebook post I did one day. See, the secret police were secret for six years, you know. So I modified this, you know. A lot there was a lot of people that modified this one picture right here. Identify and arrest the secret police. That's when I thought, you know, Trump was trying to drain the swamp and restore justice in America, you know. Uh, I finally saved up disability money and paid to get the secret police identified six years later. Can you imagine? They were caught on camera in my house and they were secret for six years. What I didn't know is is they were illegally withholding the police report from me and then that's what caused them to be secret in the first place you know so then 2019 i get the police report that has the names on them and uh and, and it was actually subpoenaed they 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 violated the subpoena and illegally withheld the, the police report and the reason is is because it was incriminating and they're looking at charges that could send them to prison for the rest of their law-breaking dirty cop lives and, and, you know, and I'm a supporter of law enforcement, but I stand strongly against police that are helping break into homes and murder people for profit. You know, we all should. Okay. And so, and the evidence is clear here. So anyways, that was what this was about. You know, Trump's identified. Of course, Trump never did say that. And I, I got a feeling Trump didn't want the secret police identified. Thankfully, the private investigator did come to find out six of the 11 people identified. They wasn't even on that report. You know, two of them are dead as suspiciously it's been you know it's been questioned if they were been murdered and then more importantly five of the ones on the report davis dickey chatwell angel and hell were listed at or in my home and they wasn't seen arriving on the security camera that's what told me that they came in from the now removed underground trap door entrance in my house and uh, and so being that we know that dirty cops were under my home and i was and somebody under my home shot me it looks like dirty cops tried to murder me in my home to free that burglar that i had been reporting to the police 
Greece. That's what it looks like happened. And 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 then tried to come in and somehow blame me. And you know, and I've compared that before as Sharon Tate, you know, uh saying uh, you know, Sharon Tate caused Charles Manson to go break into her house and kill her. No, she didn't. She was home by herself. That's like saying I caused these criminals to come to my home with guns and try to murder me and cripple me for life. This right here is the inauguration of Trump. I was so excited. I, was, I had I had written President Trump before he was elected. I've written him since. You know, he's done many things that I liked. You know, he's a likable person anyway. I think. And you know, and and of course, I'm sitting here on one hand. Biden was vice president when I'm ambushed and shot, and he's been president all this time. And every single day, my life's been threatened. You know, and I can't figure out why. You know, was his son here at an underground sex party? You know, or, you know, is it because of wealthy? donors uh, donating to his money, you know, and, and it, here was the message I sent him here. It was contact right at the White House here. President Trump, I feel like I'm living in Nazi Germany in Midland, Texas, and I'm asking for your assistance. That was, and I start telling this story, fact-based, evidence-filled story. Here, and at that point, right, I want to show you a video I did, prayers for our president. This is the day of inauguration. I'm going to play this. Okay, now remember, he didn't say that he was going to promise to protect his donors from being arrested if they're involved in underground oil show parties and the murder of innocent people, right? You know, and but that, you know, something's going on here. And so, you know, here I was so proud that day, you know, you know, and, and filled with hope. That, that, you know, finally these crimes are going to be stopped. The many, many victims. It's not just my home, you know. It's homes all over the place rigged, you know. People report the same crimes I was reporting when I was shot. April 17, 2019, Vice President Pence is in Midland. And guess where he's at? He's at a drilling rig, right? And he's meeting wealthy oil men in Midland. Uh, I think this was Diamondback. That's where he went. And this is all, you know, I, I've tried to date all this in 2019 because at the same time I'm, I'm i'm putting big evidence out there on the internet right and the press is doing their best to cover up the crimes okay may 28th i went and met homeland security who is supposed to take care of human trafficking or at least that's what they say right and but but anyways here i i provide them a three ring binder of evidence that'll solve multiple murders and stop this crime ring plus a flash drive and then on july 2nd 2019, uh, they want to meet me at the Home Depot store. As you can see, Home Depot is directly behind my house. This is my house. That's where I was ambushed and shot from. This is where they tried to murder me. Somebody under my house did. Okay. And so, uh, here I meet Homeland over here at, at the Home Depot store. And, and once again, here I am, you know, naive thinking, oh, finally found the, the cop that wasn't dirty. We're going to stop the crimes, you know, and, and, and it's finally over. And I get over there and this agent, his name's Paul, he, he, he just uh, rudely says, I don't know why you don't move from that house if you're under the threat of death. And I thought that's exactly what the that's what the criminals say. That's what they've been trying to do is terrorize me out of my home so they can get away with murder. Literally, you know, the, uh, corrupt police have been looking the other way while I've been reporting crimes, and and then other people are coming to me saying, "I don't know why you don't move," you know, and and you know, and then that's when it you know become clear that that he is not on the side of of you know. Uh, justice for sure. He they sure shouldn't be a law enforcement officer, you know. And you know, and some people question if they, if he shouldn't go to prison for a violation of the Hobbs Act because uh, conspiring with others to terrorize a property owner into selling their property is a crime, carries a twenty year prison sentence. And I, and you know, but it, it's been lawlessness. It's one one crime after another crime. No matter how much proof you got, whatever. And so, anyways, after that, then we go back here. I'm back here with Homeland Security. I had provided them Google earth map to them and i'm showing them here that directly by home depot you can see where it looked like the ground was cut right here out of home depot and you project that out 
It goes directly to my house, okay? And then that's what I believe has happened with the oil show parties because we're going to see here in a minute, it looks like an underground home. One of the four underground million dollar homes is in my backyard right here. And, and I, it's believed that based on other evidence that the people at the oil show parties or the underground parties were parked in front of Home Depot, the, the lie that was being passed was if you see a lot of cars in the parking lot late at night, it's because we're stalking. That's what a clerk told me one time when I didn't even ask about it, right? I think they were going in that store somewhere, going underground. They were coming back on this tunnel because my house. So I'm back here and I'm showing Homeland Security supposed to take care of this human trafficking, sex trafficking, all this. You know? But the one thing, you know, Homeland kept saying, what well, has to do with murders? Not my, not my job. Not my job. Not my job. Not my job. I, I mean, you, you can't imagine how many times he said, not my job. You know, literally. And uh, and so here we are. We also go in the alley. We look over the fence. Well, I'm sure, you know, I showed them here where I believe the underground home was. The million dollar underground home was there. On July 2nd, that is the day that Pence mysteriously turned around in midair and flew back to Washington and it made national news. And then they said oh, it had to do with some drug dealer in New Hampshire. I'm like, no, it didn't. It had to do with Midland, Texas. It had to do with me meeting Homeland here. That's what it had to do with. And uh, that was the cover up story, is what it was. You know, always, oh, we'll just say this, you know, in the press. Uh, oh, yeah, how, how do we cover up this murder for you? You know, that's what they're doing. Okay, here we go. Last year, the woman says, go to Google Maps, look up your address. 3802 Fair Circle, Midland, Texas. You can do this right now on your computer. And then switch between the map view and the satellite view screens. Okay, so you do that, and here's a print screen. Here's my home where I was ambushed and shot from. And it's also the same place where they murdered the last guy, the, you know, the week before the 2008 old show started, Mike Lawn. And, and it's believed that little girl that was murdered at the 2010 old show party was murdered right there in that underground secret bunker. There, You can see it on the map screen but you go to the over the to the satellite screen there ain't nothing there what there it is no it ain't oh i bet that's one of the four three bedroom underground million dollar homes the project that Layla o'brien worked on that was finished in 1987 i bet that's where they're having oil show parties i bet that's where the little girl was murdered etc do you see that and and then i'll put some bullet points <clears throat> about the three-bedroom home, recorded phone call called Million Dollar Underground Facilities. A whole different person, Rhonda Denner Rogers, tells me the underground home a half block away. I believe that's one of the other four. Gayla O'Brien already showed you what she, she said that. And and it's these underground homes are believed to be where the famous Wild Oil Show parties. And there was another guy, Ricky Ronaldo, he wrote, and he said, I used to live in that house. I said, oh, yeah? He said, yeah, me and my brother used to go in the tunnels under it when we were kids. You know, There's so much evidence here, it's just ridiculous. Watching the dates here, okay, July 2nd is where I'm back there behind Home Depot with uh, Homeland and showing them where I believe the, the human trafficking murder tunnels are at. Remember, they're supposedly taking care of human trafficking, right? Two weeks later, I come home. This is the dates, uh, July 19th, and, uh, and they're digging up the ground and they're pouring concrete. I kid you not. My home is right over here. Okay. And, and, and so many people believe that they're, they're, they were filling in them tunnels because I showed Homeland that where I believe they were at. And so that would be obstructing justice in capital murder, you know. And, and I, I think that, you know, that might be a death penalty case in anybody involved in obstructing justice. And, it, you know, that would be called what accessory after the fact of capital attempted murder. If they were pouring concrete in the tunnels used for in the murder, Murder, human trafficking murder tunnels for these oil show parties, then 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 they should be charged with accessory to capital attempted murder. Two weeks after I showed Homeland that. And just a couple weeks later, that's when Congressman Conaway announces he's retired. Now remember, his brother-in-law used to live across the street from my house. On in August. Now that was in that was uh, happened in July. Here's August 15th. I make a Facebook post called Artesia New Mexico Suspects. Based on the phone call where the woman told me about the underground homes here, she mentioned a, a wealthy guy that was a main player in here. It was a town near Hobbs, New Mexico, my hometown, which starts with an A. And that would be Artesia, New Mexico. Okay, and and I don't know who that is, but I do know that there's wealthy oil men over there. Uh, there's a couple of them. There's a few of them. Matt Chase is one of them. They own Marbob, and uh, and Marbob was sold to Concho Oil here in Midland for uh, a couple billion dollars. And uh, and Concho, I'm sure, would have a big presence at the oil show. 
Okay, and and actually that the home a half block away that I suspect the other uh, one of the other four underground homes is it's owned by a Concho employee. Okay, and and so anyways, there actually there's a picture of it in there. But I posted this at 6:49 a.m. August 15th. At 11:28 on August 15th, Vice President Pence announces he's he, he's flying to Artesia, New Mexico. This is a tiny little town right here, Artesia, New Mexico. I'm talking. It was four hours after I posted this message here about about uh, about Artesia, a wealthy oil man connected to the underground facilities, the multiple murders, and Vice President Pence. What a kawinky dinky. I mean, I mean, come on, you gotta admit that's a kawinky dinky right there, especially while I'm having crimes committed against me every day with absolute proof I wasn't shot with my gun, uh, paying to get secret police identified, proof of fake x rays, and, and, you know, and so I believe we have a presidential level of cover up right here, you know, and, and, and I have a video on this, I have a video called Pence and Pedophile Parties, and that's not saying Pence was at the Pedophile Parties, I'm saying the same phone call that told me about our was the same phone call where I heard about the pedophile parties, you know, and, and that was Artesia. Okay, so time-wise, October 11th, okay, now remember July 2nd was when I met Home Depot behind the, by, or met Home Homeland behind the Home Depot store. And then two weeks later, on the 19th, they were digging up poured concrete. I got a video of it, you know. Of course, that you know that went all over the place on the internet. And then here on October, Kevin McLean resigns. Ain't that interesting? Interesting timing, right? Don't you think? Do you think it has anything to do with with pouring concrete and murder uh, human trafficking murder tunnels? And and then this just what six days later, Energy Secretary Rick Perry resigns. Isn't that energy uh, inter interesting? Because can you see how the energy secretary might have a connection to oil companies? Do you see that? Especially Rick Perry that was governor of Texas when I was ambushed and shot. I actually have emails that I was writing Perry, you know. I wrote Perry on the day that Chad Simpson murdered his wife and killed himself. He was one of the secret police and that was... We didn't even, he wasn't even identified as secret police until four years later. That was where a secret police murdered his wife. One of the secret police involved, caught on camera, murdered him. My life goes on, murdered somebody else, you know. And Perry was a governor at the time. And so the timing is just incredible. That's where many people suspected that the Secretary of, of uh, Homeland, Secretary of Energy resigned because they got caught trying to pour concrete to cover up murder tunnels. Okay. This just came out in the news because remember what I said that Trump's over here in a fundraiser in Odessa Midland today. He's flying in today. That's why I'm making this. This is Odessa American Post today. And and this is what I started with. Ector County Republican Chairman just said Bubba Salisbury was a prime mover and securing the event largely because he's a close friend of Donald Trump Jr. and is the number three Republican bunder, a key fundraiser. Okay. And uh, and and so here's a this is a wealthy family, very tied to the old show parties or to the not to not to the old show parties, to the old show. I'm sure that they have a booth at the old show. Salisbury is, has been here in the old field for a long time and a very, very wealthy Midland family. But what I didn't know until today, that he was a close friend with Donald Trump Jr., you know. So maybe they hang out together. Maybe they go to parties together. I don't know, you know. And, and, and so these are questions, you know. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, the Salisbury... Uh, had, has never spoken out and, and called for the arrest of the people that are rigging all these homes where people get in the attic. Just this week, I had another call. I, I recorded another call of my scanner, somebody reporting people in the attic. I, it's all over Midland, Odessa. These criminals have been rigging private homes to break into them so they can steal from the homeowner and or murder them like they did me, they tried to do me, the last homeowner, etc. We don't even know how many people they've killed, really. You know, we know they're doing it. It's all over the place, but Anyways, this is what if I'm not saying Salisbury knows anything about underground uh, parties, and, and I don't. I'm not saying Donald Trump Jr. either, and I'm not saying that you know that's the reason that Don, you know President Trump has has allowed these crimes to continue because we don't know why he has allowed them. We just know he has. Okay. 
and and I was looking back and going because the money you know remember the guy says money sings you know well you know here's two people this was 2016 on the election and uh, and and remember I've had crimes committed against me every day I live in the threat of death I'm crippled career ruined my life ruined you know and and you know and they will probably I've been promised I'd you know be murdered and I and I probably and they'll probably end up killing me and uh, I, I suspect I've been poisoned and and so here we are. I don't know who this guy is. So I can't even pronounce his name. Saeed Anwar, CEO of Midland Energy. He maxed out, and he was a major donor to the Trump campaign. And I'm sure then he would, you know, have have a presence at the old shows. And so I don't know if he'd be at the old show parties or know about them. But you know, I mean, somebody the legitimate. We've always waited for legitimate law enforcement to start asking these questions because it can't be allowed breaking into private homes and killing people, and you know, and killing one homeowner after another. You know, something's major major wrong here. Salisbury family, uh, Salisbury maxed out on their donations, you know. Uh, that was on the last election. And so, uh, anyways, uh, we got a presidential level of cover-up going on here in Midland. I pray to God that, that you know, that Trump uh, will, you know, will do something about these crimes and you know and because it's good it, what it takes is somebody with some integrity and and, and you know and, and that's hard to find this buddy Midland Texas